From the Oklahoma newsroom, it's time for a Thunder update. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Thunder beat writer Brett Dawson. Brett, we're a couple days away from the NBA draft, which normally is uh, pretty interesting for Thunder fans, but this year, not so much. Uh, no first round picks for the Thunder, and it's deep into the second round before the Thunder will make their very first pick, at least as it stands right now. What's your sense about what draft night could be like for the Thunder? Well, you know, the Thunder's always an active team, always. Uh, so on draft night, I would expect that they're going to be trying to maybe package the 53 and 57 picks, move up somewhere. Maybe that means higher into the second round. Maybe that means you work into the first round. You look at a team like Philadelphia with two first rounders and four second rounders. That might be a team where you could pick off one of theirs. They don't need that many choices. They're probably going to move some of those picks at some point over the course of the night. So that might be a place where you'd sort of target it. I think they'd like to move up. We, we've seen a really, and we've written about this some this week, a, a growing importance of second round picks. Um, you know, they are movable parts. They're things that you can use to get uh, up in the draft. They're ways to get inexpensive players who might help you get better. But where the Thunder is picking in the bottom 10, it's very hard to find guys who are going to contribute. So you might want to move up a little bit to try to find yourself another guy who might be uh, maybe somebody who rounds out your roster, maybe somebody who's another two-way option, somebody who you could develop for the blue. Maybe if uh, a guy like Jeremy Grant is going to walk in free agency, you're looking for a future power forward. There are lots of things you could try to do in this draft, which is reasonably deep, but not a whole lot you can do in that bottom 10. What if they stay in that range? Is there any hope? Are there guys in the past that, you know, people could say, well, maybe this is the next fill in the blank? Yeah, lots of guys. I mean, not, not lots because the bottom 10 is, is, you know, it's always kind of a crapshoot. But if you look even in the last 10, last five picks, Isaiah Thomas was the last pick in a draft. He's been an all-star. He's made an all-NBA second team. Um, you know, a guy who played here very briefly, DeAndre Liggins, who's gone on and had some – some success in some other places. We've seen that. There, there are some guys. Um, it is not a great place to be in the draft, but the second round, because of the nature of some things that are happening, um, the, the two-way contracts that I mentioned, the extended use of the G League, the way teams are capped out with their most expensive contracts at the top, that's making drafts a little deeper. More guys are coming out. So a guy like, you know, a guy who's worked out for the Thunder, a guy like Winyan Gabriel from Kentucky. There's a forward who's a good shooter. He's not going to be a high pick. But that's a guy who, you know, in a lot of drafts, he would have gone back to college. But now in the drafts where you're getting more guaranteed money out of second rounders, you're seeing more second rounders sign two ways or get with G League teams, uh, you're seeing a few more guys who are on the fence come out. And that may make your drafts. Uh, from here on out until at least the one and done rule changes and we'll see what happens there. But they'll, they'll be a little bit deeper. There might be a little more talent than there's been in past drafts. Pan back a little bit. Give us a big picture here, Brett. Uh, this draft, a lot of names at the top sort of being floated around. Not an obvious number one. Been a couple names that have been bantered around as, as the first pick. How are we going to look at this draft after it's over in your mind? And, and is there any sense of teams that the Thunder will be going head-to-head -head against as, as it relates to Western Conference and those sorts of things that you could tell people to keep an eye on? Well, if you look, what's, what's really interesting is three of the top four teams somehow are in the West. And, and you know, <laughs> for a team like the Thunder, with so much uncertainty now, you know, what's going on with Paul George, what's going to happen with your roster in the future, you don't like seeing teams like Sacramento that's been down for so long now get the number two pick. Phoenix gets the number one pick, and they've already got a guy like Devin Booker. Some of these teams – maybe not the Kings. Some of these teams eventually are going to figure this out. They're going to get good again. And so I, I think that's one of the real storylines of the draft is you look at the West and it, the, the teams, the worst teams in the West, they're going to be the worst teams because they're facing really good teams night in and night out. This is the, the lottery is giving them a chance to really make a move. So I think that's one thing that you really want to look at. Uh, the other thing I think is interesting, this draft is really heavy in big guys. Big guys are going to go early. DeAndre Ayton is probably going to be the number one pick. Marvin Bagley, Mo Bamba. There's a lot of, lot of really high picks that are going to go to big guys. We've seen big guys getting marginalized. So what does that mean on the wings? Well, if there's really good wing players, they're going to fall down the draft a little bit to some better teams, and that could be really beneficial. Some of the good teams could go out and address wing help late in the lottery and, and sort of middle, late first round. Two-way players going to good teams. Ugh, it's going to be interesting to see how that all pans yeah, out. Yeah, it's not, 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 so this is not a great year for the Thunder not to have a, a, a pick in the 20s because I think there will be some talent to be had there, but maybe they can find a way. All right, well, you know, like you said, Sam Presti never sits around on draft night, so who knows? Maybe we'll see a, a first-round draft pick before it's all said and done. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise anybody around here after what he's done in the past. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.